Doing a Bible study this week, come across, a, I guess, a statement that, that was pretty cool. Y'all ever heard the, the phrase, somebody say, don't just stand there, do something? That's actually, uh, I guess you could say, biblically incorrect. A lot of times, whenever we see something that needs to be done, that's what we do. As a Christian, we know that in our Bibles we have a lot of different things that God tells us to do, that we're supposed to do, that are good Christian activities, good ministries, a lot of different things like that. And somewhere along the lines between salvation and death, as you're walking with God, we get involved in, in this doing things that we totally stop doing them with the Spirit. See, a lot of times we get in way over our heads and, and we don't realize that we're sinking. It's kind of like what Macy was singing. Um, our head is, is underwater. We're in way over our heads, and it's just not working out. So you keep trying to do the same things. You keep coming to church. You keep tithing your money. You keep volunteering. You sing. You keep doing all of these things. You read your Bible daily. But something is wrong. What do I do? Y'all, this life that we're living in, it gets kind of chaotic sometimes. Things get a little turned upside down. and It's easy to get overwhelmed. It's easy to get beat down. But I got a word for you today. And this is going to come out of the book of Psalms, chapter 46. And instead of saying, don't just stand there, do something. Let's turn it around and say, don't just do something. Stand there. Bible says in the book of Psalm 46, verse 10, be still. Being still is a very hard thing for us to do, right? All right. If you're already uh, lazy bones, maybe it's really easy to be still. Um, I'm going to tell you something. This scripture is used a lot of times as kind of like a refocusing thing where people say, just be still and know that He is God. Okay? That sounds great. Just be still and know that He is God. Well, we can do that, right? We know that He's God. Let's be still. But have you read the whole chapter of Psalm 46? It starts off saying that God is our refuge and our strength. Now, if God is your refuge, then that means whenever something gets hard, whenever it's the end of the day, you are seeking rest in God. It's like, nothing else can satisfy me. Nothing else is going to give me peace besides God. So God is my refuge. God is my strength. I can't do anything without Him. Look at Him. We hurry up and do stuff all the time. We're busy being Christians. I had a lady ask me one time how church was going. I said, I've been staying pretty busy. And she said, well, busy is the yoke of the devil. And it, at the time, I was like, but I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, it kind of got all over me. I, I thought about that it's like three, four years ago. Busyness can be the yoke of Satan because you can get absolutely busy doing the things that you think God wants you to do and you totally neglect God. See, being a Christian is not about what you do, but it's who you're doing it for. And if you're missing out on who you're doing it for, then you're just doing it for yourself. So uh, Wednesday night I was talking about how we got to stop asking, God, what is your will for my life? And just start focusing on what is God's will. Refocusing on God. That's kind of like the reset that we need. A lot of times we get distracted 
by doing Christian stuff. God did not send Jesus Christ to this earth to die on the cross so that He could be our propitiation. All right? That's one of them old school church words. Our substitute. He didn't do that just for us to jump through hoops and try to follow a bunch of rules in order to achieve salvation, to achieve holiness. Doesn't the Bible say it is by grace that you've been saved, by faith that you've been saved? It's not by works. So we're doing things. We're doing stuff. We've got to stand still. If you know God, if you have been saved, then absolutely God is your refuge. God is your strength. He's an ever-present help in times of trouble. You know that there is nothing that you can do without God. Tonight I'm going to talk about how Jesus Christ Himself said that He couldn't do anything without God. Now, if Jesus couldn't do anything without the power of God, I know I can't, right? Let me tell you something. None of us can. We have to have God's help. David said that He is a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Now, what God is telling His people here, look on down where He says in verse number 8, Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolation that He has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. God is putting an end to your battles. He breaks the bow, He shatters the spear, and He burns the shield with fire. God is going to lay waste to every weapon against you. You won't have anything against you. How do I get to that point? I don't want to just holler at y'all and not give y'all some practical use of the Scriptures. It's easy to stand up in front of a crowd of folks and say, trust God, trust God, He's going to defeat all your enemies and everything's going to be fine. I would be telling the truth. But doggone it, as soon as I leave this place, Things fall apart. And stuff gets hard. I'm tempted. I struggle. My faith is is hurt. Um, I go through fears and, and all these different things. God is my refuge, I think. He's my strength. I want Him to be. Because I'm tired. I want Him to be my help. My present help. All the time. I don't know what to do. Well, I tell you what, any time that you feel like you are in over your head, all you have to do is refocus. When my daddy threw me off the boat when I was a young boy, it was to teach me how to swim, not to drown me, I think. Okay, I learned very quick like that if you would hold your breath, take a deep breath, you'd float. When you panic, you don't take a deep breath and hold it. It's just... And you sink. Then you breathe in water, then you die. That's kind of how life is a lot of times. You have a choice... When the troubles come, that you can either focus on Jesus Christ and Him be your refuge, your strength, and your your help in time of trouble, or you can just freak out and do something. We're riding down the road yesterday, minding our own business. Two lane highway. We met a squirrel. All the way in the other lane. And in that moment, I was like, okay, don't, just, just don't. Don't do something. 
Be still. Is that what we're supposed to do? Be still? Oh, no, no, no. I'm looking at a room full of squirrels right now. Trouble's coming and what do we do? I better go over here. Because that thing's coming this way and I, I need to be close to it. You've got to keep your enemies close, right? And your friends far away. Why does that go? So the squirrel waits till I get right up on him. Too late to break. And I'm not going to swerve and kill Alicia and I because he's stupid. So I'm like, he just run right up in there. Bloom, bloom. You didn't have to do that. Why did you do that? Alicia and I have been talking about the sermon. She says, just like that sermon you're going to preach tomorrow. He should have just been still. I said, I know. How many times does God look at us like we're a bunch of stupid squirrels? And life comes at us and it's bloom, bloom. And God's like, would you just be still? If you would have just been still, you wouldn't have got run over. That thing wasn't meant to destroy you and flatten you. You were supposed to watch it go on by and realize that in my strength, you made it. But no. You leaned on your own understanding and you leaned right into oncoming traffic. Bloom, bloom. Flat. I told my wife, I said, and that is how you feed a buzzard. It's the circle of life. I felt bad for the squirrel. I was thinking like, you know, did he have a squirrel girlfriend or a boyfriend? I don't know. Babies? I was like, it just, life stopped. But how many people's lives, that your life just stops, gets shut down? Y'all, people are dying all around us. And I'm not talking about just physically, emotionally. Marriages are dying all around us. Relationships between children and parents, they're dying. Why? We're acting like squirrels. When, Jesus, when God said right here in Psalm 46, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among all the nations. People are going to know my power. That's what God said. And the world can either see God working through you or see life running over you. Christian folk, we have a responsibility, an opportunity to show God, to show the world God's power by how He lives through us. Or you can just get run over. The world's looking and they're like, what's the point of being a Christian? Their life ain't no more blessed than mine. There ain't nothing special going on. Churches all around the world full of hypocrites. People living in the world and of the world. And then they come into church and what happens? Gonna be holy for a minute. How many of y'all this morning on your way to church thought to yourself in your mind, all right, I just gotta get through this. In an hour, I can go on back home. Church shouldn't be something you have to try to get through or make it through. It should be an opportunity that you exploit because you've been given the freedoms to go to church. And it's all right. I get to go and hear from God. Well, busyness is a very hard thing to get away from because you can't just stop doing stuff. What we can do today is we can reprioritize our lives. We can actually live up to the Scriptures that we say that we believe in. You know, when we were children, we were taught that you respect your elders, right? 
When you talk to an older gentleman or an older lady, say, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. You show respect. You open doors. You don't talk back. You were taught this from a very early age. When you go to church, you're taught to act right. You better act right in church. I was so scared that I was going to burst into flames that I wouldn't even act up at church. Because I was like, I don't know if it's respect or just straight up fear, but something's going to happen to me if I act up at church. Running outside was questionable. And we would have play night. I don't know if we should be doing this. Man, somewhere along the lines, things changed. God got put out of stuff. I think God's will got put out of stuff. When we, when we neglect God's will for our lives, for our families, for our, our church, for whatever we're involved in, Y'all, we're just going through the motions. And God wants you to have more than that. God said that I am going to cease all wars. I'm going to put an end to whatever's attacking you. Have you ever read in the Bible where God put an end to a battle? Hmm? Yeah, it's chock full of them, ain't it? The people turned back to God. God delivered them. God defeated nations. God destroyed places. Wiped them off the face of the earth. God has the power to break shields, to do away with all spears and arrows. Any weapon that the enemy can use against you, whether it is your health, whether it is your mental state, whether it is your emotions and feelings, whatever it is that is plaguing you and wiping you, just just beating you down, drowning you, be still. Listen to me. We're going to close with this. Revival is the rebirth or igniting a fire under something that used to be on fire. A revival can take place at any time with any child of God. Okay? Maybe the only thing that's keeping you from being revived is that you're too busy doing stuff. You can be too busy doing Christian stuff. God wants you He wants your attention. He wants your love. He deserves it. He demands it. God wants you. He just wants you. Obedience, the the fruit that you bear, all that comes later. Right now, God wants you. He wants your attention. He just wants to hold you in His arms and, and let you know that it's going to be all right. I've got you. I can fix this. I can help you through this. It's going to be better. One day it's all going to be gone and it's just going to be us. That's what God wants you to know today. If you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ, if you've never trusted Him as your Savior, that may be the reason why you don't realize that God is your refuge. You can't do it. You can't earn it. You may be so busy that you miss heaven altogether. Come to Christ today. Ask Jesus to come into your heart.